Hello everyone. And so for the last video I made, which was how Santa and the Tooth Fairy exist, I got a lot of comments in the comment section, a lot of questions, a lot of good questions, a lot of honest questions. Um, I think some people were really struggling to understand how it's relevant and also let's see how it can, how it relates to uh, reality. And so I thought I needed to go back into this question of ontology, that is how things exist, how beings exist, um, in order to maybe help people understand why this is so important. Because understanding this is going to help you understand the Bible, the world of the Bible, and in general, traditional stories and tra the tradi traditional worlds much better. This is Jonathan Peugeot. Welcome to the Symbolic World. So for those who haven't seen the video, the Sant and the Tooth Fairy video, I'm going to lay it out for you very quickly. The notion is that we have this idea of things that exist. And usually especially in our very materialistic world, when people say that something exists or that something is real, what they usually mean is something that is phenomenological and, and, and can be contained. And so it's like, I know that a rock exists because here it is, I can measure it, uh, you know, I can predict how it's going to act, um, you know, in a very kind of scientific way. But the problem is that there are many things, there are, are, are many things, even for the most materialistic person, that do not exist in the same way, that do not exist uh, in a, in, as much in that very immediate way, that rather uh, exist in a different way. But even the rock itself is not as stable as you might think. But let's leave that aside for a second. Um, and so the idea was that I was just explaining how obviously to say that Santa Claus doesn't exist is is absurd because Santa obviously exists. You know, we know what he looks like. Uh, he uh, he appears in malls. You know, you can write to Santa. You can you can uh, talk to Santa, and then Santa answers through these people that are disguised as Santa Claus. Uh, and so obviously Santa Claus exists. He just exists in a different manner than you know my pen exists or 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 that, you know, my, you know, food exists or whatever. Uh, and so it was really interesting to see some of the reactions in the comment section. The main, the main opposition to what I was saying was that uh, Santa Claus exists as an idea. And so uh, a rock exists as an actual thing, but Santa Claus exists as an idea. Uh, and I thought that that was, I, I understand why people would say that. Uh, but I thought it's very it's a uh, it's a little problematic because, for example, the idea that a rock doesn't exist is, in, first of all, an idea is rather difficult because I would like you to tell me what exactly is the objective um, difference between a pebble, a rock, a boulder, and a mountain. That's not an obvious thing. That is that is obviously an idea which is which is creating those differences between those different levels of manifestation of what is essentially the same the same thing or at least shares many things in common, okay? Uh, but let's leave that aside for now. Um, let's talk about whether or not the idea that Santa exists only as an idea. Now, this is it's, it's very problematic because Santa doesn't exist just as an idea. If he existed only as an idea, we wouldn't know what he looks like. We wouldn't know uh, how he speaks. We wouldn't we wouldn't uh, know you know how he answers. Uh, and so and then we couldn't we we couldn't interact with him in the world. Obviously, we can interact with Santa in the world, you know. And so obviously, Santa Claus exists as more than idea. And it's really important to understand that because you, as a person, you know have not exactly the same structure as Santa. I, I explained that your structure is maybe a little more contained, but is not as contained as you think. You know, uh, I was pointing that out to some people in the comment section that, you know, why is it that I can interact with you through these comments in YouTube? Because obviously if you're writing me a comment, then I am answering that comment. It means that you as a person are not contained to your body. You have extensions. You have manifestations of you, which 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 
overflow your body. You know, pictures of you online, you know, through pictures of you online, I could, you know, I could see a picture. I imagine some teenage boy sees a picture of someone online, you know, and he falls in love with her. That is absolutely possible, you know. And so there are these extensions of you in, in let's say, like I said, for example, writing messages in your, in, uh, and I can answer a message that you've written. That is me responding to you in, in, a, in a manifestation of you which is outside you. But that's not the only way. There are more ways in which you yourself extends out of you. Like uh, your being can extend outside of your body. There are so many ways. Uh, uh, one of the greatest ways is your children. Your, you are, aspects of you are being imprinted and are manifesting themselves in your children. And it's pretty intense. Sometimes you look, you hear your child say something and it's actually this crazy revelation. You actually see yourself in the child or, or for example, like I'll see my wife in my child when my child says something or acts a certain way and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's like I'm seeing, I'm really seeing her through the child and you can't, you cannot uh, totally deny that. You know, and it, just for the same reason that you cannot deny that I can look at a painting of Picasso and I can say that's a painting of Picasso, right? His being extends it, itself out of his body into his art. And the same way it can happen in people. Your, your being can extend yourself out of yourself into your children. Uh, you know, for example, the leader of a group or the leader of a church or the leader of a community, his will will extend itself out into the people that are submitted to him in the same way for a company, right? And so we somehow, we can participate in the being of someone who is above us. We become extensions of his will. If I hire a secretary, that secretary in some manner becomes an extension of my being. You know, she participates, she, 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 she somehow participates in my being to a certain extent. She's extending my capacity to act out in the world. And you can recognize me if my secretary works well. You'll, you'll be able to recognize me uh, in her actions. She'll learn how to write the way that I want her to write. She'll learn how to, uh, <clears throat> to, how to, to, uh, to call people the way I want her to call. All of that is going to, is going to manifest my being out into the world. Now, it's really, really important to understand that way of seeing if you want to understand the Bible, because that is really how it is presented in the Bible. I'll give you a the, one of the the, the best examples in, is in this notion of uh, there's a story that Christ says that Christ tells about um, the rich man and Lazarus, and this in this story Christ talks about this rich man who was really selfish and wasn't helping a poor man. And then after they died, the rich man found himself in a place of suffering. And then the poor man, Lazarus, was in the, um, the bosom of Abraham. And uh, th there's a whole part of the story. You can look it up if you want. But what's important is to understand this idea that the poor man is in the bosom of Abraham. Like, how weird is that? What exactly would it mean for someone to be in the bosom of Abraham? <laughs> if, you can't, if you don't understand the way I'm trying to explain to you this notion of ontology, it's going to be really weird for you to understand that after this person's death, he returns to the bosom of Abraham. Now, would it, why would he return to the bosom of Abraham? Well, because he is an extension of Abraham. Right? And that's how it's viewed in the Bible. And so a father has children. And those children become extensions of his being. They, are, uh, uh, a, a, they make his body bigger. Okay? And so, so out of Abraham came these people and these people extend Abraham out into the world and 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 Abraham becomes a principality he becomes the the the, the head the chief the, the principality of the, that what what do I mean when I say principality he be he is the he is the thing that holds that holds those people together Abraham is the principle which holds the people of Israel together Right? One of the principles, obviously there are higher principles as well, but that's one of the, the main principles that holds the people of Israel together. And so they are extensions of Abraham. Okay? And then in the Bible you'll see, for example, 
in the prophecy of Abraham, Abraham at some point, he, he gives this prophecy on his sons. And then he prophesizes on each son. And you have to understand that he's not just prophesizing on, the, on those sons. He's prophesizing on, um, he's, he's prophesizing on uh, the tribes that those sons will then give birth to. And so when, for example, in the book of Judges, or even in the book of Kings, in, in several books in the Bible, when they talk about the tribes of Israel, they don't talk about tribes. They just name the person. So it's like in, you know, it's like in Reuben. In, you know, and, and so in Reuben means that it's like the tribe of Reuben is an extension of Reuben, right? And so Reuben has continued to manifest himself in the world, okay? Um, and so it's really it's it's super important to understand that, but it's also important to understand it in your practical life because that's what happens also in your life. If you if you're attentive, you will see that your children become these manifestations of you to a certain extent, and sometimes not always your your let's say your good sides. You'll see these weird things, these weird programs that are kind of popping up in your children uh, and that you're the cause of, but that they're not always uh, good. Sometimes, you know, they'll actually emphasize, they'll be like a specific specification. Well, I can't say that word. <laughs> specification of, of a more, a more, you know, of yourself. And so a little part of you is going to appear in your children, you know, and it could be a bad habit, it can be a, a way that they inter that they interact with others, which is problematic, um, and, and so and then you'll you'll see it, and it'll be pretty. It can be pretty intense, and all and sometimes some really good things too. We'll see. You know, like I'll wa look at my daughter, then I'll see you know certain aspects of my wife, like a, a certain uh, aspect of compassion or certain aspects of. Um, a way of interacting <clears throat> with her sister, like she'll reproduce some of the ways that that my wife is interacting with uh, with her sister. Okay, so all of that is actually describing how the how the world lays itself out. Okay, um, and it and 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 seriously, I can't overemphasize how important it is to to uh, understand that because that is also how a city works. That's how a country works. Okay, and so you you have these principalities. Okay, you can have a principal. You can have a principle, let's say, uh, that that is visible, like a, a king or a president or um, or uh, you know some leader. But then there's also sometimes you can actually understand that there is a spiritual principality which is above that, which is manifesting all that, so that even if the leader if the leader goes away, then that continues to exist. It's like, oh, well, why does it continue to exist? When, uh, why is it that when the king dies, the, 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 the country continues? It's like, yeah, the king is dead. Long live the king. Because the, 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 the principality of kingship or the principality of England or France, you know, the angel of England or France is still there. Even if the king, uh, the, the individual who's the king dies, you know, once the king is replaced, then he, he, he enters into that, that, that hierarchy of being, you know, by which the angel of France is, is still there, right? It's still holding. And in the Bible, there are so many places where we see that. For example, you know, that's why Christ can, uh, in, in some places, judge cities where he says, you know, uh, woe to you! Uh, it, it'll be horrible for you at the, on the day of judgment. And he's talking about uh, a city. You know, he says it'll be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than than your city. And and so why is he able to to judge a whole city? You know, well because cities fall under principalities. And if the principality becomes, if the principality falls, if if the if there's a you know there's a um, if a if a city that you participate in falls, then that city can be judged, you know, and the judgment can be on the city, but then it can also be on the individual. It doesn't it doesn't mean that if you if you if you say something like, uh, you know, I don't know, Chicago is corrupt, and you can say that and it can be totally true, 
that Chicago is corrupt. Chicago is corrupt. It's, it's going to hell or whatever. Uh, but then it doesn't mean that every single individual in Chicago is corrupt. And you, you can make that difference in your mind. No problem. Right? It's not because you say Chicago is corrupt that you think that every individual is corrupt. But you can make that call and it can be absolutely true because there is something which gathers all the multiplicity of, of Chicago into a unity. And when you look at that unity, when you kind of pull out and you look at that unity, you're able to see that it's corrupt. Okay? Um, now, that, that point, this point that I'm trying to make, brings up a very important uh, point. And it's something that I talked about in the August uh, question and answer period for the, for the, the Patreon uh, supporters. But I'm going to go back into it now. I'm going to try to explain it as well. Is that one of the problems that we have is this opposition between uh, monotheism and polytheism. That is really a problematic way of seeing the world. When you see the world in terms of monotheism and polytheism, you know, when we have this idea that Christian, Jews, Muslims, we're monotheists, and then the other, you know, before, or the Hindus or all these other groups, they were polytheists. And we only have one God and they have many gods. That is, that is a very... It's not helpful to see the world that way. Uh, mono, what, 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 what people traditionally call monotheists, Classical theist, theism, you could call it. What's important in classical theism is that there is, we, we, we turn ourselves, we are, we are together and we worship, okay? We, we are grateful to, we are, we are submitted to the highest possible uh, thing, the highest possible uh it's not even a being. It's the infinite, right? It is. It is beyond being. It is. It is. God is beyond being. God is. Is the. Is the infinite uh, itself. Okay. And so this notion that we can, that we can turn ourselves towards something which is above everything, which is. Which is the highest of high, right? Which is. Which is. Which is infinity itself. Not infinity in terms of time or of space, but infinity even in terms of categories, right? An infinite, complete infinite, right? Beyond being, okay. So that's how we 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 talk about uh, God, okay. And so then under that we could say uncreated, right? The before the origin, like that's that that's maybe a way that precedes all origins, okay. And so then after that, in the created order or in the order of things that that have being in the, in a more strict sense, uh, then there are all these angels. Right? There are all these principalities. That is, there are principles that rule over certain categories of existence. Okay? And so under God, we have all these angels. This whole idea of just like that it's me and God, and I have, you know, it's a really, that's a really difficult thing way of seeing the world it's very modern and it and it's very it's very problematic because it it creates a kind of arbitrariness about the world which is actually not the case at all the world is is not arbitrary uh the world is we talked about this so many times the world has to be filtered through consciousness okay there is no other way for the world to exist you know if the world exists outside of the filter of consciousness which we engage in you know, the world with, it's like, I don't know what it is. You know, it, it, it's a quantum field. Even when I say that, it's already filtered. It's a, a, a field of possibility. You know, it's chaos, basically. You know, maybe chaos is the best way to, to think of the world which which exists or doesn't exist or, or is there under, you know, how we engage the world with consciousness, okay? So because of that, because that's how the world exists, the world exists through this filter of consciousness, then this consciousness, <laughs> these consciousnesses, they end up stacking up. They stack up. And so add just as you gather all these little personalities inside you, you gather all these personalities inside you and then you you become one. You're, you're one thing. I can say you, Matt or Joe or Susie, you know, that the way that that works, that's also the way a city works. We've talked about this. The city joins all these multiplicities and then there is there is a principality that is above that and that you could describe that principality as a form of consciousness you know uh 
and and then that would be what we called like an angel, an angel or a principal uh, or whatever. Okay, and so that the 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 ancient world, let's say what we those that we call pagans, they had the same thing. They called them gods. They had all these different gods that were that were. Uh, that ruled over different aspects of the world, you know, that manifest, that, that were kind of the principalities of these different aspects of reality. Um, the difference between uh, polytheism, in, in quotes, and monotheism, even though, like, I'm trying to tell you that's not the right way to, to understand that, um, is that in... All right, this phone that rings, guys. I'm sorry. This is like the act. This is like the the, the and most annoying trope in my videos. I'm not doing it on purpose. I swear. All right. <laughs> um. What was I saying? All right. Okay. So in paganism, they have all these principalities. But the problem in 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 paganism, you know, in like in kind of decadent the kind of decadent paganism that we saw, you know, in, in late Greek, you know, before the Greeks got taken over by Alexander, and then also uh, in late Roman times before they became Christian, is that the, these, these gods, they don't point towards something which transcends them. They don't point towards the highest of higher, the infinite, which is beyond their principality. And so they, they, they don't end up being well submitted to the 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 highest principle, okay, uh, and so because of that, it causes serious problems, right? It means that that certain cities, you see it in the Greek times, certain cities will will be um, submitted to certain gods, and then these cities will end up fighting, and it's it's like you can imagine that it's all these gods fighting, and so the Greek the Greek cities they were constantly fighting, they were constantly at war amongst themselves, you know, uh, and so. And so it's not that in in the Christian times there wasn't there weren't wars obviously there were wars but it wasn't like this constant warring every year the Greeks the the wars would go out to fight with these other different cities you know where in in the notion in in the Christian notion things kind of bring together so in the same way in uh for example in Israel you see that the different tribes you know they they do end up fighting amongst each other but there is this idea like there is this idea that's presented that there could be this unity, this this thing which unites us all, uh, which brings us together towards the highest of high, right? Towards the the God of Israel. But but the God of Israel becomes, especially in Christianity, but I mean even already in in Judaism, is actually the God of all, right? It, it it's the the transcendent uh, itself. It's the the infinite itself. Um, and so in, in, in paganism, the problem happens is that you end up having all these, these principalities that, how can I explain this? That you end up having to pla- placate all the time, okay? Uh, why do you have to placate the principalities? I can explain it in a way that you can understand very easily. You, you always use yourself as a... As a um, as a way to understand this, okay? Because there's an analogy, always an analogy between the way that we exist as as a person and the way that, let's say, societies exist, right? There's this strict analogy and it can help us to understand how that works. And so you yourself is the same. In you, you have all these thoughts. You have all these desires. You have all these personalities, okay? You have multiple personalities inside you, okay? And, and and you have all these crazy thoughts which don't fit together, right? You can you can hate someone and love them. Sadly, that can happen almost at the same time. You can have all these contrary things inside you that 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 manifest themselves all at once. Okay. And so ideally what you need to be able to do is you'd be able to submit all those multiplicities, right, to your heart, right? A good way of seeing it is to Christ in you, to the transcendent you know, of which you are an image, right? If you can do that, then everything will lay itself out and will will kind of exist in the way it's supposed to exist, right? And so uh, a good way to understand, let's say, these uh, this idea of principalities which, which do not submit themselves to a transcendent... Um, to the transcendent is to see it the way the church father said it. Is so what they said when the Hellenistic world became Christian, they started to say that the Greek gods were demons. Um, 
fallen angels and demons, all these this type of imagery. And that's really the best way to understand it, right? So there, there are all these principalities that manifest different aspects of the world. Okay. And so in, in Christianity, we had this idea that there was a war in heaven, right? So there's this war in heaven, and some of the angels uh, submitted themselves to the highest, and some of the angels rebelled against the highest and went their own way and did their own thing, okay? <clears throat> and so that's really the best way to understand it, you know? There are all these principalities, and the principalities which submit themselves to the highest, they end up manifesting the positive aspect of that of that principality. And so they, they, they lay themselves out, you know, in a, in a normal hierarchy, pointing towards that infinite, okay? But if, and, uh, but, but those that didn't, they, they, they pull the world apart, okay? And so different, different principalities, if they're seen as competing with each other, will pull the world apart, right? And so let's say Athens, uh, you know, this idea of, let's say, reason and democracy and, uh, and the individual, right, on one side. And then you have Sparta, which was will, strength, you know, power. And then those two, they, if, if those principalities cannot be seen as both being, let's say, both being two different aspects of something which points towards something higher, what's going to happen? They're going to fight, right? They're going to fight. And, and it's going to pull the world apart, okay? Now, in you is the same, okay? So, so w- this can help you understand so many things about, about the Christian tradition. Um, these fallen angels, right? These, these, uh, you know, these demons, uh, they become aligned with, they become representatives of your passions. And that's why we say things like the demon of gluttony, right? The demon of pride, the demon uh, of luxury, Okay, because that's exactly how it manifests itself in you. So you, in you, you have all these desires. You have a desire to eat. You have a desire to have sex. You have a desire to uh, to um, to protect yourself, right? To to not to not let yourself get killed by other people. All these desires exist in you. Okay. When those desires are not united to Christ in you, to the higher aspect of yourself, okay then what's, what's going to happen is it's going to pull you apart. And what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to placate those demons, right? And you experience this all the time, right? I always use the idea of the, uh, the, idea of the belly. The belly is, is really the, the most immediate way to understand it. You know, you, 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 have, you want to eat chocolate cake, Right. And you, you know, you know, you're a little bit overweight. You know that that that, you know, you don't need it. You're not really hungry. You just want to eat that piece of chocolate cake. OK. And so what do you do? This desire is pulling you. Right. This principality. Right. This little personality, this demon is pulling you. And it's a demon. Right. It's a demon because it's not just you. It has a cosmic reality because I know that Joe is can experience the same thing. And, you know, Susie can experience the same thing, you know, because we, we, we share this demon manifests itself in, in, in different ways. It has, a, it has a coherence, okay? And so this demon of gluttony, this principality of gluttony, is pulling me to eat the chocolate cake. Now, what can I do? Now, I, I'm, in the, I'm in a tension now. Either, if I'm able to surmount my desire and to submit it to the higher aspect of myself, right? Then I am going to make... I'm going to submit that principality. It's going to become a normal... It's not going to be ruled by the demon anymore. It'll just be a normal desire because eating is a normal desire. There's nothing wrong with, with being hungry. Being hungry is a, is a completely natural uh, desire, right? But another way to get rid of that desire, what is it? Everybody knows what it is to eat that chocolate cake. is to pl- placate the demon, right? So if I placate the demon, then the demon goes away for a while. But it's a, it's a dangerous game because if I placate the demon, then I know that it's going to come back, right? And so it's like I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm dealing with it right now, but I know it's going to come back, okay? And so that's, that's I'm, guys, that's how the world works. Now, think, think of it in an, in, at, a, at the other level. Think of it at the level of a family, right? So I'm the principality, Okay, I'm I'm the principal of as a father. I'm the head of the, the household, right? I'm the principal of the family, and so then I have these manifestations which extend which extend uh, 
out of me, these smaller principles, which are my, my children, right? And so those children, when, we're, when they're united, when we're all united, and, 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 and we're, we're actually not, they're not just looking towards me, but they're looking towards me as I'm also looking higher, you know, and, and trying to bring my family to, some, to, to virtues, into virtues, and into something that's higher than me, then all of that is going to make it work. But then I can have, let's say, my child who, let's use the same example as the candy. It's like, Dad, can I have some candy? Dad, can I have some candy? And it's like, I know that they don't need the candy because they've had enough and, you know, it's fine. And, and I know that if they eat the candy, it's not good for them. And also, it's going to make them excited. It's going to make them annoying. But it's like, I, I have the same problem. I have the same problem. It's like, I can either bring the child and it's going to be, it might be difficult. I have to bring the child into alignment or I can placate my child and I can just give them the candy. And I know, and, and I know, I know that if I do that, I'm going to solve the problem for now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it into a loop and it's going to come back and then I'm going to have to placate the kid again. And, I'm, and, you know, and that's, that's how you get spoiled, <laughs> spoiled children. And then those spoiled children, what do they do? They rule, they become d like demons. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not saying kids are demons, but they become like demons in the sense that they're able to then not, because they're, 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 they're a, a wild principality, they, they end up pulling you and they're going to, they, they could even rule over you, right? They could even become like a, like a, something which is not supposed to rule over you, but then will totally rule over you. And that you will, it'll be like an upside down world where you will be submitting yourself to your children's desires and you, everything you do will be there to placate their desires. You're going to have to feed the, the, the monster, okay? Um, and so it's really important to kind of understand how that works. And so when I'm, when I, it's more important to understand this basic way that the world exists, uh, right? And not get too caught up on the idea of Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy, though obviously Santa Claus exists and the Tooth Fairy exists. But it, it's mostly important to understand that, you know, when we talk about God and angels and demons and all, and all these things, you know, it's not arbitrary. This is really how the world exists. And you can understand that that's how the world exists because... It, it's like the language, those, that language has been so ruined for us um, that we need to look closer to us. We need to look at our families, at societies, how societies lay themselves out, how we are extensions of higher beings in the terms of, of, uh, of societies or in terms of families because a family is a higher being than the, than the individuals of the family. When we can kind of understand how that works, then we can start to see once again what it is that these these angels, these demons, what is it that they're referring to? And how is it that, that if the, in the hierarchy of angels, which is presented in, uh, in the Dionysian corpses, in, in the, the, Areopag the, Are the Areopagite, how that is really an example, it's really showing us how the world lays itself out and how the effect of understanding that consciousness is the key Consciousness is the key. Once you understand that the world exists through consciousness, then, then all of a sudden, these, these, this type of language is going to start to make sense to you once again. And it's not just going to be something arbitrary that you have to believe in, you know, like you believe in some arbitrary divine being. No, that's how the world exists. All right, guys. So, um... I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm going, I'm leaving for Seattle very soon in a few days and I'm going to be uh, in two places. I'm going to be in, on the 11th of August. I'm going to be um, giving a talk at a church in Seattle, St. John Chrysostom's uh, Catholic Byzantine Church in Seattle. And then on the 15th, I'm going to give a talk at St. John's Church in Montesano, uh uh, Washington. So I'm going to put some um, some links down in the description so that if you're in the Seattle area, you'll know uh, where to go. And so it would be great to see some of you guys there because, you know, I'm, I'm on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, it'd be good to meet some of you there. So, uh, all right, I will see you soon. If you enjoyed this content and our exploration of symbolism, get involved. I love to read your comments in the comments section below. Please go ahead and share this on social media to all your friends and also please consider supporting us financially on Patreon.
you'll find the link to the Patreon page in the description below.